Hello guys, welcome to this GIS video. And I want to introduce you to KOGIS 3.16. Now I'll show you how to download it. Okay, I already have it installed, but for the sake of those who do not have it installed, I just want to show you. So if you want to download it, open your browser and type um, type download KOGIS. Okay. Um, it would lead you to it will give you usually the first name lead you to the, uh, the website, their website, okay. And you can look for the version you want to download. Okay. I, I, there, there are always two versions. They, they are the one. Yes, uh, they would always specify which one is stable and which one is not stable. Usually, they are released. They, they release it for a while to allow people to use it okay, and then send them a report okay, based on how it's functioning on their PC. So, if they realize that this particular, even if it's the latest one, it might not, it's not stable. So, they will actually show you the, the ones that are stable and the ones that are not stable. Uh, I think if you look here, you will see that this one is the latest release. Okay, this one is the latest release. But then they will tell you that this one is the most stable. So any of these ones can work for you. Usually you just take any of them, which is stable. I I'll i prefer to the stable ones. Otherwise, um, your your work can be freezing. Okay, so if you pick 64, so you, you can check your PC to decide what kind of uh, you can you can check on your PC to decide if your PC is a 64 bit PC or a uh, uh, 32 bit PC. Okay, it's, it's not so good. The property so you can tell it's a 64 base okay, so you download the 64 bits standard version and install it. It's just wait for it, double click install, accept um, the default, accept the license, and then click on install. Then install. I don't want to install it because I already have it, so I'll just leave it as it is. Alright, so I have my queue just open and this is not how it would be for you. Okay, so my I've been I've worked on quite some projects so you see that there are uh, you see that there are projects on it already. so yours might be a little blank. Okay, anyway, so just go for it to create a new project. And like I said, you might not see a lot of these tools. A lot of these tools might be um, might not exist on yours. So don't panic, they are, they are around, they are, they are somewhere. Some of them you need to install them, especially if you need them. If you right click on this toolbar, you, you see that you can use double and double a lot of things. You can use double and double a lot of things. Um, I think those might now be patient to take, but probably be like this, or accept the word. Anyways, just know that you can add or Remove any window you want. You want to remove it. So uh, layers panel. So yours might be like this. Basically, I think yours might be like this. And you can. So I just want to introduce you for this first video. I just want to introduce you to the, the layout and just basically how to go around it. Okay. So um, these are standard tools. Your well, basically this would be your file and other tools. So standard tools. Now this plugin contains things that you want to install that you cannot find. For instance, you have to manage and install the plugins. Um, a lot of plugins like libraries, okay, you know, we're doing a Python program. They are like libraries that exist. You may need them, you may not need them, depending on what you want to do. And when you come here, they will give you the description for each plugin. Okay. So assuming you click on let us take another one. I should click on this one. It will give you the description. It tells you that it's an active fire uh, data within the hours. I think it's a real time 
displays the latest active fire data in the past 20 hours. So if you are someone who works with the forestry or anything related to fire, especially um, fire outbreaks, bush burning, new stuff, this library can help you um, work around it, work your way around it. Anyways, a lot of tools, okay, some of them I don't know, some of them I know, depending on what you're working on. These libraries are created by professionals all over the world working on different projects. So they make a uh, contribute to 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 this to, to, uh, QGIS and, uh, environment. Anyways, the reason why we are working with QGIS is because QGIS is an open source software. Okay, you don't pay for it, you can donate, but they don't charge you for anything. It's free, unlike uh, ArcGIS, unlike EDAS, unlike um, other software, you have to pay for them. Okay? You have to pay for them. Anyways, so QGIS is free, like I said. And if you want to change anything, for instance, uh, you want to change the location of your files. Okay? okay, so if you want to change the location of your, your files, you want to change, so this one will change the location of the files. You can set your default project locations. And you can change set your default project system or your project system. Okay. My default is the new default right? Anyways, you can set your default coordinate system and uh, if you are working on the QGIS this login to anyways so what else is there? Let's try to import uh, data into this environment. You might be wondering what QGIS is for. It's 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 for GIS that's what it's for. It's quantum GIS. Okay, it's for GIS. It's a GIS application that is used to uh, visualize data, query data, manipulate it. Um, basically, it's used for a lot of things. As we go on, you you get to see what it, is, it can be used for. Anyways, so this allows you to add data. Okay? It allows you to add data. If you click on this data source, it allows you to add data. There are various forms of data. GIS is a great for a lot, a lot of data. Okay? Mostly we're working with one, two, and probably three. Vector data, raster data, CSV, that's okay. Just format the uh, deleted data, text, okay. And we format the text. Tab data. There are different forms of data. But you can probably work with one, two, three, and sometimes you have to data. There are so the vector data are more like shape files and things that have vector properties in them. Okay. The raster data are basically images, pictures, things that do not have uh, things that do not have vector properties. I'm sure we we'll, we'll, we'll get this as as we go. So I'm just going to try to add data here so that we can visualize it and see what we can do with it. Uh, I just have Okay, so this is in the coming videos. I'll show you how to download and install. I'll, I'll show you how to download data for the GIS um, projects. Okay, so I just want to get data that is quite see in the district shape now. Okay, so a district shape now. So I'm Try to import the file, so I'll just add. Ah, okay. So when I click add, it okay, will so add this shape file to the menu. So this is where you get the layers. Okay. This table gives you the number of the layers that are available. Okay. So this is your workspace, but this is your layer. The layer that you take. Now there's there's um there's uh, there a lot of things you can do. To this map. You can change the color, you can observe its properties. If you double click on it, it will give you the properties of this map. Also, if you right click on it and come to properties, you can you see the properties that this uh, particular layer has. Okay. So it, it, it might have labels. Okay, let's just put the information. You realize the, the metadata of, of you realize that this data um, is, is a shape of okay. And these are this is the coordinate system. This is the extent. This is the unit in which it it, it works with. And the number of counts. Okay, it's a polygon shape, so it probably has counts. You can see a lot more about it. You can see the fields it contains. When you open this attribute table, we will talk about all these things more detail in more details. You will see a lot more about that layer. Okay, 
and then the symbology like I said you can change your color you can change the different as labels you can activate them or move them in style style it up and a whole lot of things you can do about it okay. so as time goes on you will work with it you just need to give it the labels um, just want to see the volume and caption usually when you import data you need to study it okay. usually when you import data you need to study it to see what it has and what it does not have so in the next video i will show you some of the things you should know about your, you want to know when you import your new data okay. anyways i just wanted to introduce you to the environment and i think i have done that the most important things i have shown you this, these are tools when you have a vector layer like this on your workspace you come to the vector and you'll be able to work it will provide you with tools that will allow you to be able to work with your vector data in the same way if you have raster data you come to this raster and it will allow you to be able to work with the raster data yeah so um